Hey everybody, welcome to the Geekdom. Today I decided that I would finally do the Dark Knight Rises review because I promised I would do that and I just, I've been talking about it so much with other people and I don't know, I just, I don't really know what to say for a review and I just, since I've been talking about it so much, it's just like, what else is there for me to say? And I was like, ah, it just, there's just so much to talk about. I can go off in like so many different tangents, so it's really hard, but I figured I'd just talk about a couple things that maybe I liked or disliked or was confused about, and we'll see. I'm thinking maybe just my overall view, some characters, and a couple scenes. Um, we'll see how this works, <laughs> but anyways, um, overall, it was really, really good. I mean, yes, there are plot holes, yes, there are moments where you're just like, what? But it was just done so well overall that you can't complain about the little things, if that makes any sense. So, I don't know, I felt like it pretty much played out like the rest of the Nolan films where, you know, basically there's an idea, there's a couple themes that are reinforced. Also, little things that happen in the beginning get um, played out and perfected as the movie goes on and things start connecting and everything starts to make sense and you realize every little thing was part of a bigger picture. And that's how like the other films worked. It's just kind of following that same format and it works and it's really good and it's something that I really enjoy. Um, yes, you can find flaws, but do I think it's really something that is going to ruin the movie when you nitpick at it? No, I just, I like it the way it is. There's a couple things that I'm like, oh, I wish this was played up more and this was done that, and it's just like, you know, it's a movie. They're going to have to cut things out. They're going to have to skimp out on some things that happens. And basically, character-wise, um, we'll start with Batman. Batman did get more uh, emotional, so to speak. You could see him change emotionally a lot. And that's what I wanted. I, I wasn't expecting him to completely, like, retire. Like, I wasn't expecting him to just, oh, give up for, the, like, the last eight years. But that's something he did. And so we saw that he was really traumatized by what happened with um, Rachel and Harvey. So, also, it's peacetime. So he doesn't really have too much to do anyways. And, um... Yeah, so we see him really emotionally changed as a character. We can see that he has no more, like, willpower. He still has some of his, like, confident attitude, but he doesn't really have the will that he once did. And it's just something that Alfred reinforces a lot. And um, Alfred's kind of that father figure part of him that knows him kind of better than he knows himself, sort of say. Um, and... Also, we have um, Jim Gordon, great as always. I like how he had a couple scenes where, you know, he didn't have to be saved. He saved himself. Well, that was only one scene, but, you know, he, we see him a lot handling his own business. We see that he's his own character. He can handle his own business. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he wants, and we see that repeatedly, and I really like that. I like how Batman is just an idea that inspires others. He doesn't necessarily have to do for others. And, you know, he's not the only important figure in this whole thing, which I like. Um, and we have, what is his name? Blake, police, the officer Blake. And he was really interesting. At first I was like, who's this officer Blake? I was like, I'm kind of upset that we get this, like, Officer Blake guy and Officer Montoya was not used, like, at all in a way that I liked her at all. And, um, in the previous movie, so I was like, whatever, they're going to give this guy all the glory. But then we find out, like, who he is and what his role is. And it was kind of odd that he just, like, knew who Batman was, but it, like, it plays up the story. It plays up his role as the newbie progresses. And 
I really liked him as a character, especially when he starts growing and like when he realizes that, you know, the police job isn't for him anymore. And I thought it was really interesting when he quit uh, the force because I think it was when that police officer who was following orders and basically blew up um, the bridge and blew the chances of those kids survival as well as, you know, the other people, you saw hundreds of people behind those kids um, as well. It's just like you could have saved like at least a couple hundred people before the city blew up, but you would decide to like have them all die instead because you're following orders. So like I thought that was really cool and I think that's why he quit because you know the force was too confining and sometimes you know you have to kind of break the rules in order to do the right thing or do the greater good. And um, I think that's kind of why Batman chose him because he saw that he was willing to do more. And then we see that his name is Robin. They decided not to do any of like the traditional names like Tim Drake, Jason Todd, or Richard Grayson. And his name is Robin, so we assume, oh, he's Robin. But then when we look and Jim Gordon is looking at the little bat symbol thing, it's still a bat. It's not a new symbol or anything, so it's just like... Is he the new Batman or is he Robin? So I'm thinking he's going to be the new Batman, at least in my idea. So it would be um, kind of like Batman Beyond where Bruce Wayne is training the new Batman. I think that would be a cool concept um, instead of him being Robin because I never really liked Robin, to be honest. Um, don't kill me because I know a lot of people like Robin. Um, <laughs> and then we got Catwoman, and I felt like you know this movie was not about her at all so they used her to the point where you got a feel of who Catwoman was her personality but I don't know I felt like she wasn't used enough and um, again you know it's a movie time constraints and whatnot I would have definitely liked a movie focused around her but that's not what this movie was so for what it was Catwoman got her role and she got her part to play and I think it was amazing. I would definitely have liked to see more but again this wasn't about her. So um, I was expecting her to be like a Robin Hood type character because I, I watched a tidbit where she was talking to Bruce Wayne where she was like you know you're gonna be sorry you didn't leave any for the rest of us and she was just talking about what Bane was going to do in the future but I hadn't watched the movie yet so I was like she's going to be like Robin Hood she's going to be stealing from the rich giving to the poor but you know while she does have sympathy for those who are lesser than and don't have as much money she's mostly a for herself type of character and she doesn't really um do what I thought she was. She wasn't really stealing for the poor. She was kind of saving up for herself. And so she was a different character than I thought. She was definitely a chaotic, neutral sort of, sort of a character. And she, she just cares about herself. And that was kind of the point they were going with for her that she was like survival, survival, survival. And I think that was pretty interesting. Um, especially since she's like Catwoman, that's kind of like a cat-like in instinct. They kind of have like that survival mode, <laughs> and they're not like dogs where like the dogs will literally like put themselves in danger for you. Cats are typically more of a to themselves, for themselves kind of a creature. Um, um, then we had Bane, and Bane was really really interesting because we saw him just be this like brutal character. He wasn't chaotic evil like the Joker, but he wasn't too far <laughs> behind because, you know, he would just, he had a job, he'd do anything to get it done, and, you know, but he was also strategic. He wasn't doing it for chaos. So I guess he'd be kind of like lawful evil because he's following like an agenda, and then we find out that he's working for Talia. And so it kind of sucks because you have this image of Bane and what he's doing and you're trying to get a feel for him and then you figure out it's all Talia. So you're just like, how much is Talia and how much is Bane? So with Bane, it was kind of disappointing because you're just like, you had this feel for him as a, the villain and then you find out the real mastermind was... Thalia, which is a fantastic twist. I mean, even I was like, because I was like, Rosal didn't have a son. Like, this is 
crazy. And then um, I was like, you know, I'm going to let Nolan do what he wants. I was not expecting Thalia. Like, I just wanted to shoot myself. I was like, how did I not see that coming? Um, but when it happened, I was just like, oh, my God, like, I'm so stupid. <laughs> because she, like, you know, she had, the, like, the same kind of accent as, like, Bane and stuff. And I was just like, this, like, it was, like, a very Thalia-like character. And then... It also said because she's her own person and those of us who know who Thalia is were like, oh my gosh, her like love affair with Batman is, you know, supposed to be super large and we do get a scene where they like make love or whatever, but you don't feel like they love each other. They just, yeah. <laughs> and then we also see her like, she offers, she says, let's leave, you know, tonight or whatever and is this because she knew he was Batman and he was going to do what he was going he was going to not go anyways or is it because she really did care for him and she didn't want Bruce Wayne to die when what happened happened so you kind of can um, say that Thalia loved Bruce Wayne and had genuine feelings for him and so I like how a lot of this stuff is open-ended and you could kind of just um, make up stuff for on your own so that was pretty cool. And then the only thing about Thalia is like she, the way she died. Like, did you guys laugh? Like, I laughed. I was like, why did she die like that? Or did she pass out? Whatever. She just died or fainted or whatever. It was just so like, it looked like high school acting. <laughs> and it was just like, I don't know. It was so, it was so weird. Um, it was so cheesy. I was just like, why did she like die like that? It was just... It was, uh, I don't know. I laughed. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Who else do I have to talk about? I think those are all the characters that I wanted to talk about. Um, I had a couple scenes that I was, like, confused about, but I can't remember them. But, um... Basically, my, like, most dramatic scenes were when Bane freaking breaks Batman's back because I'm like, oh my god, like, because everybody knows the iconic picture of Bane holding Batman up and then bringing him down. Um, well, they know what happens next, that he gets brought down and his back gets broken. And basically... <laughs> When that happened, when I saw Bane just lift him up, and the first thing I screamed, like I like I was screamed, and then when it happened, I my heart was just like bump 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 bump. And the second time I watched it, I cried because I already knew what was gonna happen. But it's just such a just traumatic moment for me as someone who's obsessed with Batman um, that I cried, and then I cried again when he died again. And you know. Everyone's confused about the part where Batman dies or whatever because, you know, there's a whole autopilot thing that gets talked about. So you assume that, you know, he just did autopilot um, and whatever, but it's not really into too much detail how he did it. But it's just like, it's Batman, it's fantasy. I mean, don't take it too seriously. Um, and then it's also like, you know, it was Alfred who saw Bruce Wayne at the end. So it's just like... Did he really see Bruce Wayne or is it some like Inception stuff? Like is this Inception status <laughs> where, you know, he didn't really see Bruce Wayne. He just imagined that he saw Bruce Wayne. <laughs> and, um, I don't know. That would have been, that would be pretty freaky. But I do like the idea that like Bruce Wayne would stick around in order to train, uh, Robin or Blake, or whatever's going on there, um, like, in Batman Beyond, so I think that would be pretty cool, and then, oh man, I had the scene that I was going to talk about, and then it just slipped my mind, oh, I also thought that, you know, the Alfred and Bruce Wayne thing could have got played up a little bit, I think it got a, cut a little bit too much, because, you know, Alfred and Bruce Wayne. They've been together for many, many years, and while that scene was touching, it was cut too short for me to actually get all my emotions out from that scene. And then, you know, all of a sudden, 
Alfred's gone and doesn't see him again until like the very end at its grave. And so I'm just like, oh my gosh, that was not played up enough. So that was a little disappointing. Um, I don't know, you guys can tell that I just, I decided to randomly do this and I had it written down like an outline or anything and I'm so sorry that this is so scattered. Um, if there's any other scenes that you want me to talk about in depth or whatever, just please let me know. I, I know they'll come to mind when I am done with this video and yeah, I will definitely go more in depth if you want me to. Just leave a comments on what scenes you would like me to go more in depth on and perhaps maybe you know any speculation on what could have happened or what not so because I like how open-ended this movie is where you can kind of fill in the blanks if you know about Batman or if you want to just use your creative imagination and I just I really really like that because it's just officially an ending movie so it's not like the middle movie with the Joker where it's just it's all fun and it's all action and it's all just amazing just an action movie in the beginning like Batman Begins you you could tell it's a beginning movie this is how um, the Dark Knight Rises is. you can tell it's an ending movie and that's the theme or that's one of the themes and Nolan definitely captures it it's an ending movie it's gonna end the trilogy and that's the point so I really like that idea and um, it's definitely open-ended enough where you can kind of fill in the blanks with what you would like um, but it's closed enough to know that you know this chapter has ended but you can kind of see what kind of future might happen um, depending on your imagination and what they're kind of nudging you to believe so I like that a lot um, tell me your thoughts I know this is very scattered I'm so sorry <laughs> but um, let me finish before this gets any longer. Thank you for your time. Bye.